Okay, question 17. Question 17. Um, pretty tidy one here, actually. Nice, tidy question. Let's just power through. I probably will be answering many of the questions, um, the part B, as I go through the introduction. Um, so you can sort of, oh yeah, this is red. So yeah, um, here we are, planning for the audit of the 31st of August. We've been saying it so many times now, I think you know straight away that this says straight away that there is a, um, a new client. I'm going to do this both together, answer both parts together in terms of ratios and the questions. Um, the point I want to stress here is that when you highlight a risk, you must, you must categorically highlight what the consequence is. What is the consequence of this risk? So let me even take you to the answers because this is not so much about, I almost know that you know what's going on here. This is what's critical. I know I've said it before, but it's audit and we just need to be exact. Saying it as a new client is half the job. You have to tell us what the issue is. You don't have to use this language exactly, but the point is you're really saying detection risk increases because detection risk is on you, the auditor. That's the point, on you, the auditor. So you, whatever it is, whether you then say, listen, time, professional skepticism, resource, experience, they gain an understanding. You won't have time to write all of this. It's impossible. So you're, you're, you're formularizing this and highlighting it in a language that you understand, that you, that you, that you uninterrupted there. Um, so I was talking about the need to um, focus on highlighting not only the fact that something is a new client, but also um, you need to highlight that. Okay. Um, this business prides itself on the large range of books that it has. So it says that the owners happily, happily claim they have books gathering dust. So we have straight away, because this is audit, we're talking about inventory, um, and we are definitely talking about the potential um, overstatement of inventory due to um, cost being lower than net realizable value. Right, that's really the oops, sorry. That's really the issue here. The fact is that we are most likely seeing a scenario. What's going on? Sorry. Um, um, we, we are most likely seeing a scenario where um, cost is lower than net realizable value. That's kind of the point there with that. Good. And again, like I say, we will discuss this. Many of you are quite happy of being able to pick these out. So if revenue is generated here, there's a problem here. Internet sales through its own website. So the question here is about functionality, functionality and completeness. Will or does this website, is, there's a risk that this website may not be capturing all sales, um, if you like, happening through the business all sales happening through the business. So one second again, let me just see. Right, okay, um, I'm having some, one second, some, um, some issues with my, um, right. So there's some, there might be some issues there with the, the processes um, through the website. That's another risk, of course. Um, the other issue here is this idea of controls. So there are risks over whether or not we can trust the controls, if you like, of um, of the stock take. I've, I've highlighted highlighted before um, these issues here with. Um, with the stock take. So, because if you're going to have three days, we need to be there for three days. So there, there are detection risks. Are we as auditors going to be able to be there for the three days um, for the stock take? So the key point here is that controls help us assess existence and completeness. Yes. And if we can't be there for the three days, um, and if we have staff who aren't fresh paced, there are risks over these assertions. So there's a risk that the audit, would, the valuation of audit would be um, incomplete, or it might be probably understated, or there'd be errors. So that's where we're really going with that. So um, any recommendations we're making are very much about seeing inventory as a, as a, as a material balance, um, about making sure we're there for the three days. 
um, about understanding the processes taking place. This is very much about controls, very much about controls before we even start talking about valuation. We're just and and also the the fact that it says here that in it is in less of a shambles means that the controls are, are probably basically control risk is high. Control risk is high, so we we need to really be there to assess controls and whether or not we can rely on that. Um, then you have this um, particular inventory um, situation where um, we have enough evidence that we probably will need to write down. So what we need to do, I mean, the response is really to isolate the entire list of stock held on this and to assess, compare current stock with um, NRV and then to assess to what extent we're going to need to write it down um, is the key point here. Um, then the question talks about um, this brand, this brand recognition. Um, so we have a brand, that's the first point, and this brand is done, we, we have established a brand very close to the end of the year. So the number of risks here, the fact that, um, well, they have recognized the brand at 4 million, so we need to, if you like, um, oh, well, so oh, perfect, oh, it was purchased. So there's less of an audit risk here because it was a purchased brand. So the question here was that because it's been a brand, we need to review it or decide um, it must be capitalized. I mean, it's an intangible asset. So the idea that it's been expensed has two risks. We have an FD who doesn't quite understand. Um, so that's a risk in itself. And then we need to, and it's cheeky, but the point is you're assessing the qualification or the um, knowledgeability of that FD, maybe for half a mark. But then the key point here is you have a brand that's been, that should be have been capitalized, but it's been expensed and that's incorrect. So you immediately have, um, an understatement of profits, if you like, as a result of this, because this, an understatement of profits, because this should have been um, capitalized. This should have been capitalized. Sorry, I'm still having interesting issues with this. Um, it's jumping a bit. That should have been capitalized. That's the first point there. Um, then the fact that he's retiring at the end of October um, raises um, issues around going concern, going concern, and disclosures, right? Because it, he's 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 leaving at the end of the year. So this there must be clear disclosures so that everyone is aware, investors. Um, and also, again, he might, you know, central to the organization. Also, there's professional skepticism because typically when people are retiring, we're paying them um, a, a large dividend or we're, they might be wanting to um, sell off their own part of the business um, and exit the business. So there is a, a greater chance of wanting to inflate the figures, inflate the figures. So that's a point there that needs to be picked up on. Um, then they have this five-year loan, and there's, of course, the question of classification of this loan. question of classifying this loan um, into the current element and the non-current element. Um, also, we want to ensure that the um, interest has been recognized in the income statement. Um, we're assessing for that, for completeness. That's the other issue there. Um, and then the fact that when you do your your ratios, you actually find out that the interest cover is exactly 2.5. So there is a going concern issue here that they may not continue to have um, the the loan. The loan will become repayable on demand um, because they haven't satisfied 2.5. So so there is so those are some of the key audit risks. I mean, this is these are all the ratios for 10 marks. I thought it was brilliant because I think it was for 10 marks. Um, if the, if that even if that was for, I don't remember. No, sorry, it's not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It might not be for ten mark, but whatever number of marks. You just had to bang out all those ratios and use that as a guide. Hopefully, this would have dropped out the interest cover for you um, straight away. But you can see lots of pressure on the business, lots of pressure on these ratios in particular, the quick ratio and and current ratio. So running out of cash. Um, so, so so I think those are some of the things that you can um, play around with and. Um, you could you could have discussed a number of things here. This is 
too long. All this would have supported your writing, your confirmation, if you like, of those risks. But I think a lot of the risks jumped out on their own, um, if you like, without having to to um, think too hard about them. Okay, great stuff. So yeah, that's really that one. Um, audit risks, bang out all the audit risks, discuss the consequence, like I said, and that consequence affects the the statement of financial, whatever the statement of financial position or the income statement. So something is getting understated, something is overstated. Um, there are issues. There are issues that you must clearly state that before you make your um, recommendation, which to a certain extent has strong elements of um, audit procedures. But it might not always be audit procedures. You're just, in effect, doing something. Um, typically, AEI or you could guide you to, to, um, to confirm those risks. Okay, great stuff. Thank you.